another episode of Sleeping Giants Red Star Belgrade. We are now back and it is the first day of the season. Of course, the uh, Super Cup final against FK India for the third year in a row, I think. Um, so we've got some stuff to go over because uh, I think we've had a really good transfer window. So uh, first thing is Kofi, Abdullah Kofi, has taken Serbian citizenship, which is great. And that will help us with our foreign player cap. Um, which has enabled me to go out and just be a little bit more widespread this summer. Like, the last couple of years, we've looked very much in, you know, sort of insularly uh, towards Europe. Uh, this summer, I've taken a little look, a bit more worldwide. Um, you know, our scouts have been sending me great players from some of these places. I've just not really bothered going after them. Um, because what I actually do is, you know, I showed you, my, you know how I do my scouting, but what I actually do is when I find a player that I'm like, okay, he looks quite good, I just add them to my shortlist, essentially. And then... Once we've got sort of a decent amount of players, I'll go through and I'll filter it by like realistic transfers, basically. Now, this is what I'd always been doing because before I, I was just getting turned down all the time. Now, uh, this summer I decided to ignore the realistic transfer bit and basically just try to go for whoever my I genuinely thought we could get. And I think that's made a huge difference to who we've been able to get this summer. We've had to pay through the nose a little bit, but not so much in the transfer fees, just more with the contracts and agent fees this time around. We had the money to do it and that's the difference. We've had that wage budget eating a hole in our pocket for ages, and we've been able to use a bit more of a chunk of it this summer. And you'll see why in a sec, because um, one particular player I'm very excited about, but he won't be able to join the club just yet, which is a shame. In fact, the number of players joining the club is relatively minimal this summer, and there have been a few outs as well. Um, but we've got some players back from loan, so it's still not a bad thing. So I've had to upgrade the youth facilities again because they got downgraded, so we've had to spend £2 million doing that. I have, though, um, been able to add three more coaches to our coaching staff. I asked the board, I said, can we have some more coaches? They said, yes. I went out and got us three of the best coaches I could find. Uh, one of them's got, like, four stats that are 20, uh, like attack coaching, defence coaching, all this sort of stuff, so... Yeah, I've added some real quality to the coaching staff, which is important. I also got offered the Liverpool, Schalke and Bayern Munich jobs in the summer, which was quite flattering. Um, also... Savicevic had his testimonial, which was nice. Um, against Boca Juniors, we lost 5-2, which was a shame. We actually went 2-0 up in this one uh, with Toshka and Maman scoring the goals, but then Boca turned it around on us. But it was nice to have, you know, the celebration of his career. You know, he's been at the club 10 years now, so it felt nice to give him a, uh, a good testimonial for the game. So... And the other thing is, Lucas Eckel, right, you know, last season he didn't play that many times for us, but when he did, he looked fairly good, and he cost us a fair amount of £8 million. and I'm thinking to myself, okay, he's got good stats for the role, but maybe if we could turn a profit, we might look to sell. Um, so we got a bid from, oh God, who was it? Was it uh, Christ? They were a newly promoted team to um, Serie A. I can't actually remember who it was, but they put in a bid of £6 million up front, and like 11 million over i managed to haggle them up to 22 million pounds for lucas eckel um it would have been sort of 7 million up front and then like uh loads of other stuff in installments of like 5 million after 10 league games 5 million after uh 12 months 5 million after 50 league appearances something like that you know how it is uh or 10 league goals i think it was and yeah so everything was good and i thought if we can get 22 million pounds for a player like lucas eckel i would be absolutely ecstatic well lo and behold Wage problems. Yet again, we've had a transfer fall through because he wouldn't agree to a good wage with the club. And it's so frustrating because just as well, I didn't actually start investing in any transfers based on what I'd seen there. Um, so we've obviously got transfers to talk about. Now, we've got a few players that have come in, of course, as you would expect. Um, but only three. And one of them was actually from a little while ago. I've, I had this guy sitting around for ages, and that's why he's not particularly that great. Again, was one of the players that I was kind of not forced into, but I just had to bring in some bodies, basically. And this is Yuri uh, Vabi... Uh, Verbny, and I, I, you know, I don't think he's that great, but we could probably sell him on for something at some point. And he's out on loan, I mean, we can maybe do something with him. I'm not too bothered. Now, the other two are players I have actually brought in in this window. Now, you might notice that, yep, yeah, that's right, we've brought in a Scotsman. This is Brian McWalter, and you might be thinking, well, okay, but that potential, yeah, okay, but. But, 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 but I've had to leave him out of our squad uh, because I'm going to send him out on loan for a season because I just don't think he's quite ready uh, to be in our 25 man team. But. I like him. And the reason I like him is because, not because he's particularly great across the board, but because he has very good stats for the position I want to play him in. He's going to be an attacking, he's going to play in our centre mid attacking role, basically. Great acceleration, decent stamina, his concentration, decisions, and determination are relatively decent. Off the ball's good. Teamwork and work rate are superb. His finishing is the only sort of letdown there, really. Passing is good, long shots, first touch. I think he's a decent young player. We got him off of Aberdeen for 2.8 million. There was another guy I was going after that I tried to sign from Cork City called Peter Coleman, um, who was sort of going to be a deep line playmaker type of guy because I've really tried to strengthen in the middle as well. And 
irritatingly, um, despite us offering a load of money, he joined Newcastle instead, who were struggling at the bottom of the Premier League, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but hey, shit happens. So I'm quite pleased with Bram Walter. I think, you know, he's not one for just yet, but I think there's some potential there. As much as this is, you know, I find this completely irrelevant now. I mean, look how good Efrain Maman is. He's still a two-star player. Yeah, he's an absolute monster. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of ignoring that. This is the next one. This is an interesting one. Um, this is Wilko Kahure. Uh, we've, he's Namibian. We brought him in from... God, who was it? I can't even remember who we brought him in from. Well, he technically came from Banekostrava, but I think he was actually from Sondershusk. Um... And yeah, I mean, £3 million, fair enough, is quite a bit. But yet again, it's more about the specific positions he's good at playing. And I've been looking really specifically for that. So if we just from up here, he's an inside forward type of guy. So, okay, crossing is 14, which is great to have. Dribbling isn't bad. Finishing isn't awful. First touch is solid. His long shots are a bit poor, which is the sort of mm, let down there. Passing and technique are fairly decent. Composure isn't great, but again, still only 19. Decisions, flare, off the ball, vision, all solid. Uh, acceleration and pace are also nice and high. So I quite like Wilco Kahure. And he's, play, he's you know he's a Namibian international, and I love their uh, their national team badge. We've got him on a five-year deal. I just figured, why the hell not? I think we could use some extra bodies in that area. He is registered as part of our squad, so he will be playing some games this year. Um, particularly with the fact that Milan Gajic is refusing to sign a new contract, which means we may well have to you know move stuff around in those sort of areas. So he is the other player that has joined us now. Now, um, just take a little look at who's gone out. So, um, a lot of players went out on free transfers. Uh, people like Nibojsa Jurosevic, I really wanted to keep, but he refused to sign a new contract. Uh, we've sent some of our youngsters out on loan again. People like Bukovic um, and Dmitrievic. They're very, very highly rated. Um, Stan joined Debrecen, um, which was a bit of a pain, but I couldn't really do much about it, unfortunately. Um, Sebastian loyton has gone out on loan again to Hajduk. Uh, Vrucin has gone to Alkmaar. Uh, anything else? Uh, Yarabec has joined uh, Bucharest. Stow that is. Uh, Xavier has joined Atalanta. Poulsen's obviously at Corona Kelce. Uh, Kelce. Um, Spasojevic has gone out to Hoffenheim. Uh, oh, Nishiguchi has joined Cluj for 1.3 million. I, I've doubled, we've doubled our money on him, so I'm not really too bothered. You know, he was never going to get anywhere near our first team. We've got him for 600k, and that deal can rise to 2 million. Now, you might notice we finally did it. Like, last summer, we came close to this, um, but yeah, the deal fell through in the end. But Boyan Horvath, who just wasn't quite getting in our team enough um, for me. And yeah, we got rid of it. You know, the deal could rise to six million, so I'm pretty confident with the money that we've got from there. Um, I wish, I really wish we'd been able to get. I wouldn't have sold him had we managed to move on Lucas Echo for twenty-two million, um, but we just didn't. So we do have some future transfers though, and you know that that's the crucial thing here. We've got a couple here. I mean, there's one that was from before, and in fact, no, two of them I think are from before. So for example, Lasha um, Elba Kidze, I've been looking at for a little while, and again, he's. <sighs> Nothing special, but again, central defenders, he's got, you know, not bad stats for the role. Again, one of the ones I signed kind of when I was looking at the limitations that my assistant was suggesting, and that was a stupid thing to do, basically. Um, whereas you'll see the couple that I've managed to sign since I dropped the limitations are much, much better. Carabina actually isn't too bad. He's one of the ones that my assistant suggested we did sign. I'm actually quite pleased with him. Um, obviously, he isn't joining us just yet because he's still playing in Brazil, but... I don't know. I think he's got. Some, he's very, very fast. He's got good technicals. I, you know, technique is good. Passing is good. First touch is good. He's dribbling. He's finishing. He's a really I'm surprised. He's a sort of Trequartista type of player, to be honest. Um, we may have to look at potentially changing his role when he does eventually join us. Um, but yeah. So we've got him. Uh, we've got Joaquin Para. Now this guy, I'm actually quite excited about. Uh, this is one of the ones I've looked at this year. As you can see, again, only two three-star potential but for me I was looking specifically at players that had those advanced forward sort of stats and I think this guy sums that up perfectly dribbling 14 finishing 16 already at the age of 17 he's Colombian uh, playing for Atletico Nacional um, 12 first touch not bad heading either considering he, you know he's reasonably tall but not super tall um, passing is decent as well at 12 anticipation is the and decisions are a little low composure is not bad he's very determined he's got good off the ball his work rate is high as well um, physicals you know, they're going to take some time to come. But I think Joaquin Para could be the sort of missing link that we're looking for up front. Except I then found someone even better. Oh, did I? And we picked him up for 5 million. This is my favourite signing, I think, that we've made um, thus far. Although he's not really a striker. This guy's more of a sort of uh, midfielder, winger. We, we, we can play him so many different places. I just think he's awesome. Um, so, yeah. It, fact is, I think we could probably train him as a striker too, if I'm honest. I think he's probably got quite decent stats for a striker. Like, he's got decent 
in reasonable finishing. Like, for an advanced forward, he's actually not bad. Like, looking at his individual abilities, I think he could probably make a decent advanced forward, but the point is he can play all over the place. Uh, we want to play maybe train him in this sort of position here, uh, maybe a little bit here, or maybe just go for the striker. I think he's probably got decent, quite, quite decent stats for an advanced forward. Uh, but again... My scouts, even my scouts like him. And I think he has hilarious hair, which is always a good sign. And this is Rogerio, basically. He plays for Sao Paulo, but we've managed to pick him up for 5 million. Now, he will be on a buttload of money. I think his contract is 20,000, but it was all we could do to get him to join this club, basically. Um, but he's not joining us for another two seasons, I don't think. Um, but that's going to give him time to get even better in the meantime and bang a load of goals in for Sao Paulo. So he's one for the future, but I think he could be the sort of king striker that we're looking for. Um, he actually reminds me a little bit of Pipoca uh, during the Pompey so not quite in the same positions but you just say about him feels like that type of player so there we go uh there's any more no we're good okay cool so we've got a game today of course we've got the game against fk india and that's what we're going to get into of course right now so pre-season um well, actually i'll just show you what the sort of team we're going to be lining up with this year i mean i'll, I'll do a quick bit but then we'll adjust uh to our own sort of needs so to speak so let's just do a quick little Transfer. So Kaspers and Bazanvira are still away, as of course, which is something that tends to happen, as is Landry Fernandez. So we're going to have a few people um, sort of stepping in. Toshka Sadibi up front, Savicevic and Maman, Chufedzic, Kofi, Adamenka, Kone. Right, okay, what I'm going to do first off, literally first off the bat, I'm going to drop in Casado um, in here because I think he needs to get himself some game time, uh, personally, and this is a good chance for him to try that out. I'm also going to put in um, Lucas up top today instead of Toshka. And I'm going to put in Kahure out on this left instead of um, Savicevic. Like, he's getting there. He's not quite there yet. But for me, he's got all the attributes that I would like for a deep line, uh, for an inside forward. And I'm hoping that he can slowly improve, basically. That, that's the overall idea I'm looking for with him. Uh, anyone else I could probably put into this game? Um, no, I think we're okay with everyone else for now. Is there anyone else I'd rather put in? Now we'll stick with that for now. It's, it's not perfect, but... I just want to give people like Kahure, uh, Casado, and Lucas a run out because, you know, I decided to keep Lucas at the club this season. I've decided to keep Casado at the club this season as well. Um, I thought about loaning them out, but I thought, no, no, they're going to get game time because we're going to be rotating the squad like crazy this year because we've got such a strong team overall. So I figured let's just, you know, let's just go for it, basically. I would love to see um, Lucas get himself a goal today. Um, by it, she needs a number. Oh, that's strange. I thought I'd give him a number. Um... Maman actually wanted to keep the number 51, so he has been allowed to, but Ulia has moved up to the number 13 or 18, I think, uh, from his number 88 of last season. Uh, oh, 15, sorry, my bad. Um, most of them, apart from Yildirim, again, wanted to keep the high number, which is surprising. I guess they've become attached to it. I don't know if that's the thing that players can do in the game, but hey, it appears they can. This should be a relatively comfortable one. I would like to see it in absolute smashing, obviously, we all would, but I wouldn't bet on it. I think... You know, it's just a chance to get people like Lucas and Kahure and Casado little runs out here, basically, because they are going to come become important for us, and it's important that they get that game time. Um, basically, that, that's that's what I'm doing here. But I do want to see if Lucas can get himself a couple of goals today, start bedding himself in nice and early, um, getting in with the team. Sadibi, obviously partnering him up front today. Sadibi going through the Maman is in already here, back across for Sadibi, and it is one nil. And Efrain Maman will take the assist. Um, in the cup final and Sadibi of course scoring the goal Sadibi actually won a cap for Italy uh, which was amazing considering you know he's good for what we do but perhaps not on a world level the thing is though as a result of that and that his value at one point was up to six points and bear in mind he's got four years left on his contract yeah I was getting bids from like Chelsea and Man United of like 600,000 why would I sell him for 600,000 and they would not budge above a million and it's like he's worth 6.5 million pounds he's got four years left on his contract why the hell would I sell him for for a million quid. It's ridiculous. Um, we have started getting a little bit more money in offers, though, for our players. So I guess that's something. Oh, Kahure's in here. First goal for the club for Wilco Kahure. I'll tell you what. Like, he, he doesn't... When I first saw him, I thought, there's no way that he's... I, I thought he was Dutch. Um, but he is actually from Namibia, which is cool. And he's already got two na international caps of them, which is amazing. So, you know, maybe he's got something. I don't know. I feel like he could possibly be our left wing sided version of Efrain Maman in the sense that they're a little bit underwhelming in terms of their potential looks. But, you know, on the pitch, they deliver. I'm hoping anyway. So Debi with the good strike. And it's over the line from Lubisa to Fedzic there to put the icing on the cake there. The bearded man gets his first goal of the season for us. And, you know, um, also Efrain Maman was voted. Um, oh, no, sorry. He won, obviously, a shitload of awards, but it was actually Ashraf that won the pl uh, fans' player of the year, whereas Savitrich has won it pretty much every year for as long as I can remember. But Ashraf had such a good season that the fans voted in their numbers. 3-0 um, up, though, and 
well, this is a domination job, as you would expect, and it's been a good half. Uh, nobody's really contributed anything more than either a goal or an assist. Not that I could contrib- ask them to contribute any more, think more, but I mean, like, nobody's got multiple uh, goals or multiple assists just yet. I'd like to think that someone today will sort of stake a claim. Um, so pri- I'm, it's a shame to see Lucas... Uh, has, but it's good to see that Kahure has got on the score sheet. I need to see a little bit more out of Lucas. Now, obviously, we'll be giving him some game time this season. Um, he's going to get, you know, he's going to have to. We've only got four strikers registered in the squad, so um, he will be getting game time. <laughs> Make no mistake about it. And Kone with the clearance. Maman, who's pretty much nailed down that position on the right-hand side of our midfield now. He is just such a good player. If he plays like he did last season again, then, <sighs> Wow. I just think he's brilliant, and I don't know why he doesn't have a higher star rating. I just wonder if maybe it will suddenly jump up at some point um, as he keeps on smashing the goals in. Maybe it will get reevaluated. I don't know. But then it doesn't really matter what the star ratings say, does it? It's all about, oh, Luke, what a save from Stevanovic. Lucas probably should have done better there, and it's those sort of situations that we need to be getting him to put the ball in the net in. Those are of paramount importance, shall we say. Um, Adam Eko's picked up a knock. That is the last thing we needed at the moment, particularly with um, Fernandez out on international duty. You know, we had a, a sort of a glut of fullbacks uh, at one point. There's something, an area I really, oh, for God's sake, come on. Really? Two injuries in the same game. Oh, I brought in, fit, one of the guys I brought in was a fitness coach as well to try and, re, uh, we've got brilliant match fitness, brilliant training facility. You just can't stop it, can you? Okay, well, uh, well, it's obviously going to be yielding him. And he's certainly not a poor player to bring on, that's for sure, but I don't want to get Trufetic injured. You know, he's a solid, solid performer for us. Kofi with the free kick, and Maman over the line, doing what he do. As 4 0 to Shrevenas Vezda and Efrain Maman scored on the first game of the season. Will he start doing what Savicevic always did for us in uh, always scoring in the first game? If he gets another 20 for us this year, I'd be incredibly impressed with him. He's genuinely a fantastic player. Like, he just seems to have come out of nowhere and forced his way into our team, and that, that's quite good, just to have players that are actually capable of doing that, uh, considering where we are in the situation. Um, let's just make one more substitution now. Lucas has not been great today. I should... He's probably been our lowest performer. I'm I'm sorry, Pierre, but we're going to bring on Marcel Bourez uh, for the latter part of this game. Just as you know, he got us a fair amount of goals. I think he got 18 for us last season, which is not bad for his first sort of full season for us. I'd like to keep a clean sheet today as well, if we can. Man, does so well there. Bring it up to Sadibi. Will Bourez immediately score a goal? That would be a little bit embarrassing if you're Lucas. Uh, yielded him. Sadibi. There's a bit of space in the middle, or will he go back... Yep, Kofi, yielded him. Can he slip a ball through the channel into Sadibi? Oh, it's Maman again. Oh, he is just the ultimate inside forward for me. Um, he does kind of what Mark Rakowski was doing for us. That's the best way I could describe him. He's a Mark Rakowski type of player, um, where he would be able to cut inside and lash them in from long range. But at the same time, he's also got that pace, the dribbling ability, the just genuine finishing, because he's essentially a striker being played out wide. Casado with the header, but he's offside. Haven't really seen a great deal from him today either. Uh, but it looks like a 4-0 win in the cup final. And they'll take that anyway, any day of the week, with a slightly weakened team. And there we go, we win the... Uh, uh, Super Cup or whatever it is. Not really a big surprise there. Casado still did well, though. You know, he got himself a 7.8 rating. Nothing, not too shabby. Um, So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. It's nice to see Kahuda get off the score sheet, get on the score sheet. Obviously, we've got a little break now until we um, play our first group matches, um, which we'll obviously find out about in the next episode. So, in the next episode, of course, we'll have the draw for the groups, and then we'll have our first group game, which means we've got five league games to get underway before then. No doubt we will try and win all five of them, obviously rotating the squad as and when we can. You never know what will happen in that time frame. So, guys, if you like what we've seen, please do drop a like on the video, and if you'd like to even more than that, please subscribe to my channel for more Red Star and Outcaster icons in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode for the draw and our first match in the Champions League. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.